Hey, Keisha. Hey. I mean, hey, LMJ. Hey, LMJ. I got it now. Five, six, 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 and I should have it. Huh? Whatever. You said what? You cannot hear me. No, I got my music too loud. I'm about to turn it down. I said, after now, by six weeks, you can call me that. Like, you can call me. I always say LMJ is my professional name. And Lakeisha or Keisha. I prefer Lakeisha. I like all my, like, ghetto names to Lakeisha. All my mom gave me. What did it do, uh, Fit by Nay? Fit by Nay say, I'm tapped in. Tapped in. But tap in and share it, please. Share this. Share it right now. Everybody right. share it. We're going to talk tonight. Uh, listen, I'm open to anything in this hour. Uh, Can I got some questions? Your, yeah, we're open to your oh. questions. No, I got some questions for you tonight. I'm not nervous. Let's do it. Okay, good. Right, I'm healed now so I can answer them. Uh, and then even the audience, if y'all have some questions you want to ask, ask those questions. Uh, oh, if, you, if, you, if you hit me in my inbox and you want to come on, I'll even, I'll even send you the link. You know, you can come on and pop up on stage with me for a minute. Just be respectful because if you're not respectful, I'm sure Lakeisha knows how to block you. So she will uh, <laughs> she'll kick you out right quick. She'll kick you out the room. Hey, Michelle, Teresa. Hey, Fit by Nay. Y'all share this for real. I'm, I'm still sharing right now. And then I'm going. We're going to get this thing started. We're going to get it started. We're going to get it started. We need a. We need a really. This is week six uh, of six. So uh, this is well going to be the last one for now. So uh, I need you all to please, ma'am, please, sir. You see, I'm speaking prophetically. I said it for now. I don't know if you caught that or not. I heard you. (laughs) Okay, good, good. You probably swing in another direction. We're going to definitely swing another. Yeah, we. That's why we call it a stew. It, a stew that a stew doesn't consist of just one ingredient. It wouldn't be a stew if it did, would it? So Amen. we try to we try to uh, diversify and try to talk about different that's subjects, diversify. and uh, that's where we are. But check it out, uh, Lakeisha. This is what I wanted to do tonight because, um, of course, we've been trying to talk about what's marriage material and all these things. And and our from the beginning of the onset, we've always talked about how our goal is to uh, help uh, men and women get back together, get on a process towards marriage and all of these things. Mm-hmm. So what I want to do tonight is I want to kind of debunk some myths. I want to uh, eliminate some of the outside noise uh, because so many mm-hmm. times we're, 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 uh, we're lured by satanic suggestion and subliminal oh, suggestion from, from outside entities that, that come into our community and suggest certain things. And when they suggest these things, so many times we buy into them, yeah. not realizing, you know, that it's like the cartoon when they would give you the, the pretty package that's wrapped up in a gift. But when you open it, it will blow up in your face. And look what it's done to our communities. It's literally blown up our communities, right? Because we got black men and black women that don't trust each other anymore. You know, we that's find true. more reasons not to, not to, as opposed to, and uh, and I want to talk about that tonight. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, and uh, and so let's because you've kind of what you've done. And I really want to pre- uh, everybody, y'all. I appreciate LMJ for her transparency these last five years and some of the lessons that five years, uh, weeks. I mean, last five weeks, five 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 sessions. My bad, my bad. I ain't known that long. But these last five sessions <laughs> and the me- the lessons that she's taught, the lessons that Jermaine has taught uh, from heaven, uh, and though and some of those things that they've shared, and I appreciate them. Uh, mm-hmm. And I want to share, you know, and I want to build more on those conversations tonight on our way out. Uh, yeah, that's good. Okay. So did you, did you read the post? If you all haven't gone to my Facebook page, I I, I put a post up today and I, I don't even have it up yet. Let me, let me find it. Uh, but it's talking about women. And this is one of the biggest issues. I'm so sick of that conversation about 50, 50 and. Uh, who should pay the bills in the house and all of these types of things. A woman marry a man who makes less than her and then yeah, she got yeah. feedback, yeah. Yeah, so that, that 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 creates a lot of flack, right? And so, yeah. uh, but this lady, uh, what is her name? I'm, I'm trying Shemika to get to Dean. Shemika is Dean. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Shemika Dean. She's yeah. a doctor. You know her? No, I have no idea who she is. Okay, yeah, Sh- Shemika Dean. She, uh, she does something with relationships and she has some doctor and all this kind of stuff. I don't know if it's her earned doctor or not, but anyway, she says some good stuff in that, in that uh, thing. And at the end of the day, this is what I want to kind of press that. I want us Lakeisha to stop projecting our pain on others mm-hmm. and making it their pain mm-hmm. as though it's 
they're supposed to, it's supposed to be synonymous, right? Yeah. Um, if one person hurts you, one person hurts you. <laughs> that doesn't mean that everybody carries those characteristics. Go ahead. I see you kind of moving your lips. No, I'm sorry. Lips. I'm moving a light. You're fine. Okay. Go ahead. It's no, a no, light. No, 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 no. But you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I'm, I, I find, you know, like, like I was with somebody the other day and they, we were in the barbershop and there was one young lady in there. And she said, well, my friend had this man who did this to her. Okay. That's one man. Yeah. yeah. Well, he did this. Yeah. Okay. That's one man. You know, and you can't place the burden on everybody because one person hurts you. Yeah. So I'm try- I, re- I really want us to get to a point, place, and posture where we can say, you know what? I did it. I made my mistake. I was hurt. Uh, let me get through my lesson, but I'm not going to, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. I'm not going to come into my next relationship with a preconceived notion. Yeah. Because yeah. I know if I come in with a preconceived notion, that's going to paralyze the potential that's with this person. And I um, I am committed to, I'm going to say your growth, not my me growing you, right? You and I had had a conversation not too long ago about people trying to grow people. I am committed to your growth. I want to grow with you, but I don't want to, um, I don't, if you already have determined you're only going to go so far or you've already determined that the pain from the past is so overwhelming, then you potentially potentially stunted the ability for us to grow together. I 100% agree with you. Give me my fresh start. Like, give me my fresh start and don't punish me like for the pains of the past. I remember one time, I remember one time, it was so funny. I tell you, remember I tell you all the time I was broken uh, when Jermaine got me. And I remember one time I was responding to something he said. And he flipped around and he looked at me and he said, hey, I'm not him. I, I didn't do it. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't talk to you like that. You don't have to respond to me like that. I had been in an abusive relationship for like four years. I'll never put my hands on you. You don't ever have to worry about that. You're in a safe space. Wow. And I, I remember it triggered something for me to be able to come back in and say, what was I displaying or what was I doing? And I recognized that from being in the abusive relationship that was mentally and physically abusive, um, that I had begun to project on him mm. what I was real. And let me tell you why, though, what I was really never able to articulate in the other space because I felt safe enough. I was projecting and saying things to him that I probably never would have been bold enough to say to the other person because of the fear that I had in the relationship. With that being said, I was that for me, what I learned later is I was taking his love, his grace and his patience for granted. Mm. So I was showing out because I knew he would continue to show up. Wow. Right. you yeah. wanted him to show up. You needed him. Yeah. To show up. I wanted him to, but yeah. I knew. But I also, when you know when you safe, it, it, it you know when you safe. Like you know when there is someone who will put up with your mess. Yeah. You know that. You you can feel it. Uh, that there you know that. And I think when we know that, those are the people that we show out on the most. Are those are the people? Oh, that, that's good. I'm that's just being good. honest. Those are the so, let me ask, so let me ask you this thing. So let me ask you this. So, and because you know you're safe, right? And I heard yeah. you, and, and you, and you wouldn't have said this to him, yada, yada, yada. So check this out. So because you had to test that faith, I mean, excuse me, test that safety, yeah. was it in a sense a lack of faith to an extent from the standpoint, if, if, I, can, if, I, can, if I can give him this hand grenade and yeah. it blows up, yeah. then I didn't lose anything anyway. No, it was well, no. So listen, it goes back. Avery said it for me best. I was okay. pushing limits, knowing there were none. Okay. I knew this man was so committed to marriage. I'm just gonna be honest. I knew this man was so so committed to marriage. It would take a lot for him to leave me. I knew that. I knew how testing much he, those limits. I was testing them, but I knew there were none. Okay. He was gonna. I knew this is somebody who had committed, who loved God faithfully. Like I knew how much he loved God. And I knew if God told him, and I'm just saying, I'm just going to tell you, I knew that if God told him I was his wife because his obedience to the father, 
he's going to stick this thing out. So whether I was conscious in doing it or subconsciously doing it, I pushed boundaries that took him for granted. Ooh, this is good because yeah. I recognize his faithfulness, one, to God, but to his loyalty to me. And I think sometimes we do that when we know a person. It's like your kids. I, and my son has said it before. Judah said it one time. He was like, I know my man going nowhere. And I think when we get in a space that we have determined that a person is not going to go anywhere or a person has proved to be consistent to keep showing up for us again and again and again, we'll push boundaries there expecting because there's a breaking point, I think, for everybody. But we push boundaries there expecting that that person will show up again. So what we may not have presented in another relationship, we will present in this relationship because we feel like we're in a safe place. Don't make it right. Don't don't make it right. But but we'll we'll do it. It's like people who um, know you go. Are you this? You can count on you can count on her. And one of my friends today said something so powerful. We were having such a deep conversation. She and I are known known for being loyal to a fault. Like that was our conversation. I am loyal to a fault. Sometimes I'm even loyal to the wrong th thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so being in a situation where you can be loyal to the wrong, wrong, wrong thing, meaning that it ain't even true for you anymore. And she gave an example of um, supporting a bad business. Like, you know, somebody's business is support bad, but you made a decision. Oh, I'm not going to talk against another bad. I'm not going to, I'm not going to talk about a black business. I'm not going to treat a black business like that. Know. But you know, it's a bad business. And so then somebody comforted you because you swore oaths by yourself that don't make sense in every season. It's a whole nother thing. You swore oaths by yourself that don't make sense in, no, in every season. Then you show up loyal to something that may not be true for you in, anymore. Gotcha. It may not be true. It may not be true. So I think we when we when we say sometimes we go too far. We will go too far. And I was going, I know I was going too far in some spaces until the Lord really began to check me and be like, oh, okay, you're taking him for granted. Gotcha. You're taking him for you, taking his love for you for granted. You're taking his obedience, which is really abusive, and we don't even realize. That's that's good. That's good. So let so let's talk about let's talk about that a little bit more. So uh because we 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 want to get on we I don't know how God did this, but it seems like we're using your life, a lot of your experiences, of course, as examples uh, okay. for people as to, to kind of use as marriage material. And it's good. It's good. It's good. But what I got to do, what I got to do in this debunking myths, because we got We got to kill a demon tonight. We got and, and we got to do it because some people are not going to hear it. They're not going to hear it now, but they're yeah. going to hear it later. So and, and this is the thing, because you just said something a minute ago. You said you knew he would show up. Yeah. Uh, you said you knew that uh, he wouldn't leave, and you and a lot of dudes are like that. Cause when we love you, man, and Avery, I'm sure you can attest to this as well. We gonna we gonna <laughs> we'll put up with a little extra, right? And we might be like, for real, man. <laughs> like seriously, I mean, I was in the store yesterday. I was in this is a perfect practical example. I was in Kroger yesterday, and uh, I went over and I was, what was like when I was getting some fruit punch or something, and so. Uh, it wasn't water. It was fruit punch. So I'm over here getting, and then all of a sudden, this young lady said, "Okay, let's." She said, "Let's go." Talking, not talking to me. She's talking to the two people she's with. She said, "Let's go," and he didn't. The guy apparently didn't hear. Then she said, "Let's go." He's sitting here. Then he said, "She said, God dang, I said let's go," and went off and said, "Why are you still here? I told you let's go." And this, he said, "Dang girl, you running out." He said, "Why are you doing all that?" He didn't raise his voice at all. He didn't try to check her back, didn't try to, you know, um, uh, get, get loud with her. But he kind of wanted to quell her in that moment, <laughs> let her see herself. And she still was going off on him, right? You know what I'm saying? And so it kind of makes me think how many people push the limits. You know what I'm saying? Because I think sometimes I, when I got divorced uh, and I was thinking about dating and I really didn't want to date because I knew I wasn't ready to date, but I felt like I was supposed to be trying to date. I was doing this thing, walking around, like literally handing out metaphorical hand grenades mm -hmm. i would mm -hmm. hand you a hand grenade you know and if you hold on to it enough you're gonna blow up right yeah. uh but honestly if you would have been bold enough whatever and y'all do me a favor share this story it's 24 people in the live y'all share it. we should have 48 in just a minute but uh but uh whenever uh i would do that um 
if they if because if I I wouldn't give you a hand grenade unless I liked you, Lakeisha. Yeah. So, so if you asked me for the pen, I probably would have gave it to you, and yeah. we could have kept both kept from blowing up. But a lot yeah. of times, I me and it's wrong. I ain't gonna as wrong as two left shoes. I would give it to you, and whatever the collateral damage was, I took it. And I and I take that, and I'm using that to say sometimes people I think raise their voices and test the limits to see if you're going to leave, maybe because so many other people left in the past. Could be potentially. I, I told some, I, I definitely think sometimes we throw out tests. I'm going to tell you in my experience, I'm not saying right. I think y'all do it more than we do. I think we push limits and boundaries when we feel safe. I think y'all, because, and I'm not saying I'm accurate. I want to speak for all men. I'm not a man. No, that's good. That's I think good. you guys have more tests because you're trying to navigate through if this net don't get out my way you're trying to navigate through who's for you and who's not for you and y'all have been through as much as we have right whether self-inflicted whether whatever men have still been through a lot i think you guys navigate with more tests i have been in certain situations with people for a hundred percent and i know at the end of the day i'm like this was a test like they're trying to like I had something happen with someone and they they made they upset me and I could tell the next day they were trying to see how I was going to show up mm. because they asked me to do something for them after they had told me no the night before. I said, so either this is funny, either I do this or not. And I'm like, I think this is a test. Well, I kind of got a little issue with that. I'm OK with you trying to find security in me. As long as I don't think you're playing games. As long as I don't think you're playing games. I'm okay with you finding security, right? Because uh -huh. when I've been in very unsafe spaces, I need to know that you're not showing up the same, same as everybody else. Mm -hmm. So, but watch my character. Like, watch the fruit of my character. Instead of, and make sure you're not playing games with me. Because games can just lead to a, like a dangerous space or a dangerous place. And so I do think we like, we just handle it and respond and do it all differently. Like women do it a certain way. And I think as women, we express emotions, but as I've got more emotionally mature, I'm just being honest, not perfect, but more emotionally mature because I have now found myself in a space of I'm offering you some information about me. If I think I like you, and you're supposed to be here because also if you're in my life, you're intentionally in my life. I'm very protective mm. about who gets to be in my space. Super, not lightly, super. And like, if you walk, walk intimately with me, I'm going to vet you for a while before I decide you can walk intimately with me. I, you may, I may be close to you. You may not be as close to me because I'm really watching the nature of your character and whether or not I'm getting disguised fruit or whether or not I'm getting really, really fruit. And I have like this policy that after so long, you cannot fake it and it's going to fall off. Like the true you is going to, you're going to surface. So I might give you more time than someone else does because as a friend, I'm trying to see where you are, where I used to probably not. Now I'm like, I need to see where this person is. I need to see this person in more seasons. I need to see this person under pressure. I need to see this person yeah, uh, when they've hit a hit or took a loss. I need to see more about this person. I need to see how this person responds with me because I've battled anxiety for a long time, right? And I need to, and I tell people that, hey, if somebody asks me, tell me your flaws. You seem too perfect or you seem too good to tell your flaws. And I'll tell them my mouth can be slick. <laughs> my mouth can be slick. And um, I fight being anxious over thinking a circumstance or situation. But I try to give you that up front so that you know what you're dealing with, right? This is, I'm handling you the keys so that you know, well, when I tell you I fight anxiety, um, then this is what I'm looking for from you. Not trying to play games with you, looking to see if you're compassionate, looking to see if you're understanding, and looking if you have respect for where I am. If you don't have the patience to deal with me and my singleness or why are we friends, you probably gonna have a hard time because marriage only magnifies whatever dysfunction I have. Absolutely. It don't minimize it. It don't correct it. It's coming into the marriage with me. And I need to know 
you're going to stick and stay. <laughs> I don't want to, I want, I need to do another till death do you part. I don't have an in-between in it. I need another till death do you part. That's good. That's good. That's good. So let's, let's, so you say, you know, I heard you. And the main thing that stuck out like a, like a sore thumb at that particular moment was you don't have time to play games. And I hear women saying, don't have me out here looking bad. You know, don't, you know, we ain't got time to be playing games. Uh, hold on. I'm, I'm, let me, let me, and, and I get that. I get that. So I got a question. Yeah. I have a question. That's, that's leading up to a whole question. And ladies, I need y'all. Listen, while we talking, first of all, everybody share it. I only got 14 shares, but I got 20 some people in the group. But uh, I, y'all dialogue with each other. And, uh, and y'all talk to each other and talk to us, but let, let's talk to each other. But I got a question for you because I, I missed a good one. I ain't gonna lie. I know one. I know I missed a good one. I missed a good one. And she told me something, Lakeisha, uh, towards the end. And what she told me was, she said, more, she said, you did too much flirting and not enough courting. She said, you did a whole lot of flirting and you didn't do enough courting, right? Uh, women, so y'all tell me what that means to you. If a man, because we talk about marriage material, if a man is trying to be a suitor for you, Shamika, uh, Olive, uh, D- Julia, Meredith, all you all, how would you want him to court you? Tell me what she meant, Lakeisha, in your eyes when she said you did too much courting, I mean, too, excuse me, too much flirting and not enough courting. How do you turn that corner from flirting to courting? Well, first of all, um, you teach people how to treat you. You teach people how to love you. You teach people how to whatever. Um, so I think at some point that she should have asserted or said to you, because for you to tell me you missed a good one makes me sad, right? Um, but those happen. I'm all right. I'm good. I'm good. Not I'm good. not like that when our eyes aren't open. I'm not. I'm just saying. I'm not saying. I'm, I'm joking. You know. I'm, hey, I like to laugh too. Look, I like to yes. laugh. But well, listen. So you saying you missed a good one? Um, and sometimes our eyes are not open. I still think communication is key and the biggest thing in anything. And so if you were doing too much flirting and she needed more, she should have said to you, James, there's some other things that I'm looking for from you. um, And here's what I need. A person cannot guess at what you need. I am consistent at asking people connected to me. Hey, what do you need from me right now? What can I give you right now? Well, I need you to show up. I have a friend right now. She's like, I need you to show up as a friend. I want pastor. I want teacher. I want whatever. What can I do? How can I show up for you right now? And so I think um, if you were doing too much flirting and not courting, um, she should have gave you that information. Now, mm-hmm. how do I prefer to be courted? And those come with engagements. Like you should have been asking questions. Oh, do you like flowers? Do you like dating? I mean, da 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 da. And then so. I'm going to give you a list of the things that I like, but that's also in that investigation piece period Absolutely. that we don't spend a lot enough time. You and I talked about that, that we don't spend enough time asking enough questions when I'm dealing with someone and they stop asking me questions. I'm, I'm, I'm watching them because I'm like, you should be wanting to know more about me than just telling me about yourself. I ask a lot of questions. What do you like? What do you eat? Uh, what cologne do you wear? What kind of socks do you buy? What kind of underwear? I'll probably get on your nerves. And when you at, if you tell me all underwear, things, like what kind of underwear do you wear? What if you have an emergency and you like, man, I had an emergency. Can you go grab me some underwear? What kind of underwear do you wear? Like for me, no question is, do you wear boxes? Do you wear briefs? Do you wear whatever? whatever. Because what if I got a runner and pick something up for you? What kind of lotion do you use? What kind of soap do you use? Like, I'm asking you that. What do you eat? What do you do if your stomach is upset? Um, do you like to be left alone if you're in grief? Like, I'm asking you that. And I'm not asking you this to perform. It's I'm asking you this so that I get to know you because I don't want to be perfect for you, but I want to be better for you. I want to have a knowledge and understanding of what you need and you like versus me guessing and presenting to you something that you don't even desire. I'm not going to, if I present, that's, 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 that's relationship one-on-one for every relationship. That's relationship one-on-one for every relationship. You should know your girls. I have my friends and the people um, that I serve um, in ministry with, I'll ask them, give me a list of your favorites because I don't want to present something you on your birthday that I think you would like when you in a whole nother vein. Wow. Get That's a relationship one-on-one. What kind of things you like? What do you smell? What do you like? What are your places that you eat? Where are you? Boom, 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 boom. If you paying attention to or listening for context clues 
when you tell tell me certain things. Um, I eat really different, really healthy in some aspects, really not unhealthy. But if you call my my girl, my ace, my Jonathan David relationship right now and said, hey, what are a list of some things you like? She could tell you, oh, she eat Twizzlers. Oh, she eat Raisinets. Oh, she going to eat Sour Patch Watermelons. If you're trying to fill her gift basket, this is what she eats. Um, she's bougie when it comes to candles. Don't buy her no lotion. Uh, she uses Vaseline. Like she going to get it all. Or she uses shea butter. She going to give you a whole little list. Or if you hit Josiah up, he going to say, my favorite restaurant is Santo Coyote. Uh, if you want to do something for her, buy some shoes. Uh, mama's really into a reader. Like your people should know. Well, it's no different between the male and the female thing. So if she needed something else from you, then um, if she needed something else from you, then she should have spent time articulating it. No man can guess what a woman needs. No woman can guess what a man needs. This is the foolery that we have going on out here. And what I feel like is a problem is because we are not confident in ourselves. We have had to say, this is what I need. And we have a fear of being rejected or being hurt. Here is where I am. This is what I, I love fresh flowers. You know what I put on my table? I put fresh roses in today. I said, oh, let me buy you. ain't bought yourself a roses in a minute. Let me put roses on my table today. So I can articulate to you. But that's also why it's important during your single spirit, your single um, period for you to discover what you like so that you can come and articulate and you don't find yourself in a situation settling for flirting when you really want to be courted. And I, But I'm like right now, though, honestly, I've heard people I, I, like one day I heard a lady flat out say men don't know how to date. Right. I did. All, and that, because of that, I did a whole series on. Uh, show us how to date you all this kind of stuff but right now since we've been on this show in the last five minutes i asked a question and the question i asked was how would you prefer to be courted no yeah. one has answered they have, said, but i've been telling you on the clue the things that i like so i know you have i'm talking about i want them to tell me i want the ladies in the chat because some men might be watching and and may be watching right and, but, and, and but this yeah. is my point this is my point let me let me make this point like a lot of people are quick to tell you what they don't want but they but now I'm asking you what you want. <laughs> so can I tell you one other thing though, where sure. you may see some skepticism? I'm skeptical you. to tell you everything because I want you to dig, find, and see. Tell me one thing there. So tell me yeah. one way to court you. So Don't give me everything. One, one way, <laughs> one way to court me is to send me flowers. Okay. Um, one way to court me is I love words, and I don't want fake words. Give me the words of your heart. Okay. I want to hear how you feel about me. I want to know that you feel. I don't want you to go. Um, you're beautiful, but I know you know that. I hate that. Okay. <laughs> I hate that. Tell me. You're tell me. I, I'm okay with you telling me I'm beautiful a thousand, a thousand times. <laughs> like, like a thousand times. Tell me. Tell me. Hey, you're beautiful. Tell me I'm smart. Tell me because I'm. A, I'm gonna hit you up with something. Like I mm. want to know. Like, if you tell me you're thinking of me, I promise you what's coming next is um, how were you thinking of me or what were you thinking about? You cannot just tell me you were thinking of me. You need to tell me how, how, what was on your mind? What were your thoughts? Because I'm going to engage you in that way because I want to know. So courting me, actual courtship, not not me, whatever, or whatever, because when we look at flirting, it seems temporal, Right. Courtship seems like we're going somewhere. We're trying to develop a romantic relationship, right? Yeah. But but we need to be clear as well when we are still in that friend zone, you don't display courtship type behaviors. So if we just friends, we cool and we getting to know each other. Mm -hmm. And so if we cool and we getting to know each other, then the first step to that is we hanging out, right? We we're hanging out and, and we're doing it. So when we turn around and talk about courtship, it's, it's the period of the time, it's behavior that you're showing me that you're interested in me. That yeah, you're being shown. I like that. Your behavior, you're showing you me an interest. So what she was probably saying was you were flirting, but not serious. You were yeah. not invested in a, she didn't feel like you were invested. She felt like you were just on the flirt, the flirt of it. 
Well, can I be honest with you? I'm going to say this, and y'all can be mad at me tonight if you want. Most of the women in the room gave attributes, but didn't say how they want to be courted. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that because I don't want anybody to feel like I'm pointing Most out. Of the women I, I don't think they know. But they dropped attributes, but didn't say, I want to be surprised. I want them yeah. to take me on a date. A they dropped attributes. Yeah. They, talk, they dropped attributes, but they didn't tell you how I need you to show up. Uh, that I need you to show up. How do I need you to show that you are in pursuit of me? That's, that's what I'm trying to what, find out. That's what a courtship means. How do I know that you are in pursuit of me? <laughs> I get it. I get it. it like, how do I know? That's what a courtship is. You're. How do I take? How do I show you that I'm in pursuit of you? Right? <laughs> how yeah. do I show you that I'm pursuit? I'm in pursuit of you. Cause I can list attributes that anybody can. Oh, Lord. That's why I love you. I ain't gonna. That's why I and love you. That's why I love don't you. know how to tell you how to pursue. Yeah, right? and, and, and that's that's don't, real talk, don't know how to pre- pre- tell you that I to pursue. I don't know how to tell you tell you pursue, and then we'll get frustrated because you're trying to figure it out. I had a friend recently. She on here. She gonna. I'm, I didn't get to dress her the other night, so I'm gonna dress her here. But I ain't gonna tell her who she is. She made a statement that she was dealing with somebody, and she was like, "He paused. He said, I need to pause and spend some time praying about you." Well, in her eyes, she where's this? She where is this coming from? Well, it's coming. It's coming from a space. It's coming from a space where he really may be interested in you, and he want to make sure that this is God doing this. And not his flesh. She's beautiful. She's gorgeous. He might want to make sure it's God doing it and not his flesh doing it or doing whatever. Well, when we find men who don't operate in the zone of how we're used to men operating with us, sometimes we think they strange. (laughs) You could have been trying to fill her out. Avery said some folks don't give up enough time to learn. Absolutely. No, Avery, because most of us are so afraid of releasing and letting go. I'll tell you something God told tell me. You. God told me something very big. He said, look, he said, if you're going to do this dating dating thing, right? He said, if you're going to do this dating thing. So Tina said, hold on. I want to have a long conversation so I can get to know you. Take me out. It's cool. But if we don't have the connection. So, but connection isn't always determined immediately. Connection can occur during a series of events because if someone has their guard up, you won't get to tap into the true connection anyway. Connection only happens when there's a level of vulnerability that is released. It's like a wall coming down. So if I'm presenting a person to you in the conversation because I'm afraid to really show myself to you because I'm afraid that you could potentially hurt me. Mm. Having the long conversation doesn't necessarily gauge whether or not y'all have a connection. It may take a series of events because the before is not fine. Come on, Amber. Amber said, call her, not text. Make plans with her ahead of time. Not ask me the day of what my Thank plan. you, Amber. I appreciate that. That's good. Spend time with me to learn about me with effort. That's, That's it. it. So, and then I'm, I'm, I'm a little opposite of Amber. I like spontaneity. Call, I'm busy, but call me at... You want to, you trying That's to okay. get my attention? Call me at the last minute. Text me and hey. say, where you at? What you That's doing? What That's so, what I'm saying. And then tell me how you want me to dress. Baby, throw a dress on. Consumer Reports published a study showing 95% of supplements on the market are contaminated and contain magnesium stearate, which decreases absorption and increases a toxic material in the body which has a lot of pesticides in it. Many companies are labeling it as a vegetable steroid. Central Silver has at least three dyes that are listed on the national cancer list as a potential carcinogenic. Most of the minerals in it are in the form of oxides. Oxides oxidize the body. That means they rust the body out. At Immune Wellness Pharmacy, you will receive supplements that are dispensed in glass bottles they're vegetable capsules with no additives, no dyes, no fillers, no preservatives, no magnesium stearate. To know your body is absorbing the nutrients it needs, stop Immune Wellness Pharmacy. That's pharmacy with an F. Go to immunewellnesspharmacy.com to shop now. Immune Wellness Pharmacy. 
restoring optimal function to the human body. And I would say, okay, don't tell me how you me want like you know, me to dress. Like Throw a dress on. I like, I love that. Tell me, baby, put on some dress. Throw some shorts on. Tell me how you want me to dress. <laughs> the dress. See? See, but see, see now, Amber, last you said last minute, minute makes you think you are plan B. See, but listen, for me. <laughs> but hold on. But listen, it make keyword personal pronoun. It makes you feel that way. Yeah, that don't mean it makes Lakeisha feel that way. And that's yeah. OK. Yeah. All of our situations are unique and yeah. have their own fingerprints. Yeah. My problem yeah. with Amber, like if somebody like you now watch this, Let me, I'm, I'm now I'm. This is improvisation, y'all. This ain't. This is not a real situation. This is acting right now. Amber, dude shows up at the last minute. Amber gets a hair up behind or whatever it is, gets on social media. I can't stand men. Men always showing up at the last minute. Why a man can't plan a date? All he got to do is plan something. If you want to be with me, then plan something. Yeah. Uh, that was just your thing, young lady. And that's was, okay. Was, and, but you're spitting poison. And we, you're right. And we got to leave enough grace to stop thinking negatively love hopes for the best right yeah. Therese said she wants her to call say good morning find out what she like if it's roses send roses not daisy call me throughout the day check in on me if i like conference concerts say hey baby your favorite guy is here what can we go tell me good night be consistent consistency is important for me too yeah. with our relationship call don't text all the time tell me what makes you happy oh, show Lord, i'm in love actions i love that sir yes that's i love that did you that's hear what she said she said tell me what, what makes you happy, you happy. yeah Most but women can i say can i add about- something to that but if you tell me can i say something can we bear for a second tell me if tell me what makes you happy and then can we deal with your trauma so you can let me give you what makes you happy yes can you let me and right now can i tell you something because of what you described earlier of dealing with hurt and trauma some of us, some of some of Vanessa Williams said it best. Research me. That's what I like. Absolutely. I like to be researched. I want you to discover me. But Probably. some of us, some of us put ourselves in a space where, and I'm just saying from my brothers right now of what I've come into contact with. That's how I know y'all hurt. That's why I'm sensitive and gentle with y'all. For my brothers right now, I ain't got no tricks on my sleeve. Whoever tricked you last time, whoever messed up on you last time. This them. I ain't got no tricks on my. Uh, I ain't got no tricks up my sleeve. Let me let me make you happy, mm. and stop thinking me making you happy is some. If if you if you if you pray about me, you'll find out. Cause the Lord gonna tell you. The Lord gonna tell you. you best stay high tail and away from that person, <laughs> because that person is no. Are you gonna see the signs and the symbols and the whatever else? I'm like, nay, my, my heart clean over here. I don't have I don't have time to play and mess with you because I don't want nobody playing and messing with me. Wow. That's good. That's good. That's good. Time. That's good. I'm I'm gonna tell you now this I love I love how this conversation is going because I wanted I I wanted to prove that point. Not really a point, but no, I, I, I want us to be able to say what we want, say what our expectations are, and really articulate them. And don't penalize somebody for what they don't know. Don't come don't. on, Coy. Coy said, Coy, I'm not going to leave through. you guessing. No secret hiding places here. I don't have signs and symbols. That's I it. Have That's it. Coy, Coy I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel. I'm going to tell you exactly That's where it. I'm at. I'm going to say exactly what I need to say. I'm not getting ready to try to mix in you mixed messages. I'm not getting ready to play games with you. I'm not getting ready to ignore and avoid your text because I want you to chase. I'm not doing it. That's not who, how I am. If I don't respond to some, you said I don't respond to your text. It's because I got busy for real. Like I got busy. I had something to do. I'm not. I'm. I'm same same way. There are healthy. I tell people all the time. There are good men out here. There are good women out here. There are barriers that have been in place to make us think we can't coexist. And Absolutely. so a lot of us, a lot of us will give up and stop looking, or a lot of us will squeeze out. Can I tell you something? The right person, like you said, will be before us. But because we're not mature enough to handle the relationship or mature enough to sit still long enough, because it may not be until you sit still long enough that the true intentions of the person are revealed. Well, I don't want to waste no time. Preparation is never time wasted. When you are healthy enough, 
You can invest healthily in a relationship. Know that you planted good seeds. And if at the six or seven month mark, work out, don't give you cookies up, keep them in the jar. Like things, things that lead you to emotional spaces that are unhealthy. Don't put all your time into that one person. See somebody else until y'all have a clear understanding of what y'all are doing. You are talking really, really like, good. You know, are y'all listening? Bounce around with somebody else until are you got a clarity of what. But preparation is never time wasted. I have a rule. If I spent, I didn't like this man. at work until God started growing me up. If I'm spending time and investing in you or you spending time and investing in me and then this don't work out, I did not waste time. I did not waste time. That's it. I prepared myself and we don't end up together. I prepared myself for something greater. And then I'm not getting ready to talk trash and say, oh, listen, you ain't, you missed out on me. You missed on the best thing. No, I'm not going to do you like that because no. I don't want you to do me like that. What I'm going to say is the vibe wasn't here. You Absolutely. went this way. I went that way. I pray. You find what you are looking for. Now, here's the problem with that. Because for some reason in my life, the tendency has been for people to come back and realize I made a mistake. But they always do it when it's too late. Yeah. And what I mean by too late is they are usually on a course of somewhere else. And I'm simply saying to them, Stay on your course because there is absolutely nothing I can do now about the situation. I don't have a rule that you can't come back because you may come back to me more mature. I don't have that rule, but you can't come back and you belong to somebody else. Wow. <laughs> but you can wow. come back. I'll give you a second chance unless it was volatile, detrimental, and you have narcissistic intent behavior. I'm opening the door for you to come back because you may leave me and grow up. And I may grow up and be more mature. I don't come to the table perfect. And part of the problem I think right now, I'm going to do this for my women. I love y'all. But part of the problem that I think that's for us as women right now, we think we sitting at the table with all the bags and all the solution. And we a hot mess. Man. Yeah. Keep talking. I'm just going to eat my shit. I'm being real. I'm, I watch. I'm in women's ministry. I'm watching. I watch people communicate that they healthy, communicate that they good, but their behaviors and tendencies do a whole nother different thing. Not until I started dating did I really begin to understand where I am. Like not until I started dating did I recognize that I had some immature tendencies. Not until I started dating did I recognize that I had, you know, you because you don't understand where you at until you're in the thick of it. You don't know where you at while you're single. You think you know where you at. But not until you come into the space of another person of the opposite sex, if that's where you are, not until you're in that space with the person, dealing with that person, do you really want to know where you are? I didn't know I had insecurities until I started dating. I didn't know. I did not know until I was in the space. <laughs> you will not know until you space. And unfortunately, we will be in a space. Also, I love us, but I'm mad at us at the same time. We will be celebrating each other's wrongness. I ain't gonna interrupt you when you're talking that good. You better go ahead. I'm Come be on. honest. I, I'm I'm say so I will be celebrating each other's wrongness. And I'm a woman. A good male friend of mine said, "Y'all judge each other according to women's tendencies. Y'all do not judge each other according to what a man needs. Y'all judge each other based on." What another woman has told you is a good Man. woman. When he told me that, it made me catch myself because Ooh. I'm like, I'm a whole package. I'm a whole deal. I'm a whole. I'm a whole, whole deal. Family. I'm a whole. I'm a whole. That's this was my attitude. I'm a whole. Boom, 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 boom. When he told me that, I started doing an inner search on what could I potentially be bringing to the table that could be detrimental to the relationship. Well. As I started spending my time, I call it unpacking the bag. As I started spending time unpacking my bag, I realized there was insecurity in my bag. I realized there was trauma in my bag. There was anxiety. There was worry. There was fear. It was not even a re until recently, until recently, that's why the power of the Holy Spirit is so important. Until really recently that a friend said something 
and boom, it opened my mind to go, your heart, and I'm a true believer, that if your actions and the tendencies are not there, then what's supposed to happen for you won't be drawn. My heart, until a friend of mine said to me, uh, I don't think your heart open. Wow. And I was like, of course my heart is open. Boom, 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 boom. And then I started meditating and thinking, and the Lord started saying to me, you are scared. <laughs> you are scared. You are scared. You are scared. Mm -hmm. You are still scared. You have the fear of losing again, right? Or somebody leaving yeah. or whatever. And then when it was shown to me, I said, okay. So the Lord said, Lord said to me, he said, I'm going to say something. I, 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 he speaks. He said, you, he said, however you preach, you know, the Holy Spirit. He said, I say the Lord say, because I want to keep speaking. He said, I need you to do me a favor. You're never going to know what you like and what you, because I'll be 50, right? When I first got married, when I was there, I was like 26, 27. He's like, you'll never know what you like or want unless you get back out here and date. Wow. And I had put myself in a bubble because I was single, but at home. Yeah. I wasn't trying to be fan. I wasn't trying to. And I kept getting the confirmation. You need to get back out there. You got to get in public. You have to go space, not just church. <laughs> so, uh, so then the Lord said, I need you to I'm do me a church favor. folk anyway. Yeah, me too. I need you to do me a favor because I want you to trust me with your heart. I'm never asking you to trust the person. I'm asking you to trust me with your heart. Sometimes it might sting a little bit, but if you give me your heart and let me lead you in this, you're going to discover what you think you know what you like. So you don't like. So guess what? I started dating. Found out I don't like him 35. Try. Uh, right? <laughs> Found out I don't like him 70. I try. Y'all know what you like until you. I, I like him saved. saved. I'm going to sleep. Wake me up when it's over. I'm <laughs> I'm going to you see me sinking farther and farther in this chair, don't you? I just I like I don't like them thirty five. You don't like them seventy. I, I don't like them. I tried it. Try. Okay. You you won't know until you tried it. You don't. You won't have nothing. I tried. What about it. you? Can't miss what you never I had. Mean, it's not that I'm anti somebody seventy. I just. <laughs> Rena I said no granddaddies. The way Rena. I don't like that. Renee, change your language. <laughs> Renee. Um, Hey, I'm, I'm well. I'm not. I'm not a granddaddy, but granddads can be forty five nowadays. Yeah, 35. I'm a grandma at fifty. She <laughs> come in. But I found out I didn't. And it wasn't this particular. Lisa, I appreciate you for that transparency. I appreciate it was, that. It was a. It wasn't a particular person. It was when I started realizing because he, my God, it was amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. But when I started realizing the gaps, when yeah. I started realizing what my sons may need, when gotcha. I started realizing how much, and I've been widowed before. That's a heck of a loss. When I started realizing how much time we may have together, then I'm like. You got a 70 yeah. is a risk for me, right? Okay. So then when I tried 35. <laughs> what, what, what's the dancing for? Just because. What's going on in your head? What's going on in your head? Okay. No, no, right now. Listen, woman. <laughs> when I tried 35, right? Okay. You said I, I can ask any questions. I ain't no cougar, but don't push me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't no cougar, but don't push me. Well, I feel you. I ain't no cougar, but don't push me. Like when I tried 35. Said, pressure applied to the tender place. <laughs> when I tried 35, right? Because I wanted to figure out what I could I do 35, right? Before I say no, yeah. am I putting myself in a place where I divinely could miss what I need because I won't try 35? So when I tried 35, I was like, yeah, it's probably a little bit too young. Uh, my son is thirty. My son is uh thirty one. He'll be thirty one this year. That will make right. the person only four years older than him. I got grandsons. How will he be able to vibe as a grandpa? Like, do you have kids? Are you gonna want more kids? Like, so I had to do it, but I wanted to try it. I did not want to be able to say, "Oh, I don't do this. I don't rock like this. I don't get down like this." Because I hadn't dated in so long, I didn't know what I even liked until I started experiencing it. Wow. I needed to have experiences to proof me in this season. And unfortunately, we won't give ourselves chances for experiences to even proof where we are or where we going. Or we do. So my list of, I absolutely not change, changed into a list of 
let me even discover and see, you know, what I may not like, right? Like for me, um, my love for Jesus does not change, right? And I was talking to somebody once and they were like, they were like, you know, I really am interested to you, interested in you. And I'm like, you know what? This is cool, but you know, this is my lifestyle. <laughs> like this thing with Christ is my lifestyle. And I don't know if that's going to flow with you, right? Just based on where you are and what you told me. This thing with life is my Christ. My Christ is my lifestyle. That's not, that's not comprehensive. That's not going to change for me. This thing for Christ is my lifestyle. So I don't know that you will flow with me. Because this thing for Christ with Christ is my lifestyle, right? So Nisa said, when the older gentleman is 60 and you say there is no chemistry between us, his maturity, level, he busted my window out of my cars. I'm glad I didn't kiss or sleep with him. Well, I mean, he probably saw potential or thought process or, you know, whatever else. And then we bet like on so much more than Jesus. just chemistry. You need chemistry. You need consistency. You need connection. It's like four or five compatibility. Other compatibility. Thank you. I couldn't you think of need to be compatible. compatibility. You need those things as well because chemistry can be strange. Sometimes you have chemistry. You have connection with people that are the same. You know what I'm saying? So you need compatibility. Chemistry you can be manu- It can be manufactured. You take. You take a little. Yes. Oxygen and put it with some hydrogen, you're gonna make water. You know what I'm saying? If you if you, you can you, you can manufacture chemistry, right? And but because com- we are such a uh so, and I get it, Nisi, but I'm just saying, and because we are for real, sex is so taboo, sex is taboo in the church. Yeah, um, because, sex yeah. Is tab- we don't talk about healthy sexual relationships and we don't talk about healthy chemistry, and we make a strong feeling, oh, that's lust. Like we don't divide and deal with those things. So people don't articulate, no really, especially say folks don't really understand what chemistry is because so many things have been made so so taboo and not having lengthy discussions of what you're feeling or people make you feel bad about it. It's just lust. Well, I'm feeling something strong towards this person and it don't necessarily mean that I'm trying to sleep with this person, but this person is a whole vibe. And man, I want to be connected to them. Well, if nobody properly teaches me how to manage the whole vibe, then it's either going to go extremely wrong or I'm going to, I'm not going to even be able to, uh, I like that cook. <laughs> Thank you, Corey. Corey said he's even his age on maturity. He was crazy. Yeah, I, I, I was, when he, she said he busted one down at 60 years old, I was kind of done right then. You, he right did you call here. the police, Nisi? Yeah. It, yeah, it wasn't did maturity. You, did you call them folks? Nuts. <laughs> she, you should have called them folks because he needs to be admitted on that one right now. I promise. If he busts your window, cause, and you ain't even give him none, I'm think about how he would have acted. Jasmine, Jasmine said, bust your windows out your car. <laughs> I don't, don't look. No, the me. woman is doing it, though. A dude doing it, that's a messed up situation. Don't, hey, I done had a few people who have I, so I like a little possessive. I'm getting y'all all my business tonight. I like a little possessiveness. You like her to be possessive? I look. I like you to know. I want when we out and um, y'all just getting to me. I want when we out and men floating around me. You to assert yourself, not to me, but just slide in just a little bit, like market territory. Show up strong. Slip your hand around my waist and pull me close. And let them know I'm with you. Like, that's what I mean. But if you show tendencies, and it, like, pull me into you. Let them know you're with me. But if you show tendencies, <laughs> you just say probably got worms. I'm crazy. Uh, <laughs> but if, <laughs> if you show, y'all going to y'all gonna tear James up tonight. If you show tendencies that you may be potentially out my house at night, <laughs> If you show tendency that comment going on the screen that, that you may be out that you gonna be outside my house at night, I'm probably gonna have a problem with you. If you show me tendencies that you riding past my house, I'm gonna have nay stay safe. I, okay, uh, I I'm gonna I'm have I'm gonna have a little problem. I'm gonna have a little issue because you probably got some potential to go the other way, right? So you probably got some potential to go another way. So anybody who's there, because I'd be strong on me or grab my elbow, I'm going to go, whoop, whoop. <laughs> and when I go, whoop, whoop, you don't know who might show out. Any of one of my sons may serve you. We got a so that's, that's, that's your gangster car. 
I'm dead. Oh, oh God, Carl Robinson, what's where I'm dead. Oh my God, she's dead. <laughs> I mean, I'm in distress. Or if I give a look, if we're in a social situation, I give a look. Just gonna say, who did who? Y'all are killing me. Listen, like listen, 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 we ain't good. listen, 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 listen. That means anybody connected to me need to come running. When woo woo go out, you, with you and your old worm having uh, dude. Tina said your old man had worms, so you were saved anyway. Ooh. Good thing you didn't mess. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, so James, <laughs> is 35 too young for you? No. Okay. So then why? Why James said shoot? <laughs> why? Did Why you, is a woman? Did you say 25? I'm sorry. 35. I ain't say oh. 25. Oh, okay. Why? So so that's good. 35 too is 72 old for you. Help me. Yeah, it's good. You almost made me cuss. Yes, it's oh. too old for me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's nasty. Ugh. You know, and listen, my prophetic oh, eye lets me hey. listen. No, I'm this is me. Now I got my own fingerprints. You but listen, you no, 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 no. Let me say this. My prophetic eye lets me see what you say. And I so know, I when you say something like that, see, 70 is still, 70 is to me is the same 70 when I was six. Because, you know, who, you know what I'm saying? So I can't imagine I you, if I can't look at you uh, naked, when well, we grown, if I can't vi- envision you naked, I ain't, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I'm, he might I'm, be fine like Angela Bass. He might, but let's go with yeah. probability. I'm going with probabilities. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go with the law of average. Like no, Bess? 70, no. May I ask you a question? No. Okay. No. So, um, I got, I got to. I got to, do, do she have to have a little rump shaker on the back? No. <laughs> this for you particularly. Do no. she have to have a little rump shaker? No, not like that. You know, just a little lady lump. It can be flat in the back. No, it can't be flat, though. I don't want to iron my slacks. I don't want to iron those slacks. Up. I set my clothes to the cleaners anyway, but if I got a wrinkle, I don't want No, what? do that one more time. Do that, <laughs> do that one more time. <laughs> no. So, okay, she'll have to be flat a bit. She'll be flat. Mm-hmm. So, um, can can she have? And we're dealing with physical attributes. We being silly, y'all don't override. I'm petty. Go ahead. Y'all don't, don't be talking about my weave or no weave, James. Weave I'm or cool no with, weave. I'm, I mean, we it's 2023. I'm cool. With, but listen, I got. Now I do have an issue. Okay. Now I like wigs are cool, but like if I meet you and you got a wig, and then later on I meet you and you got a Grace Jones. I feel like I was deceived. So if, if you meet me and you find out it's a week. Now I will change my hair 30 times. And yeah, but do you have a Grace Jones? No, I got a hair full of I ain't try, You can have your brush, but I don't I want my own brush. This is my I don't want to share wave, I, don't worn, wanna, I don't want to share wave brushes. I've worn my hair tight and faded before. I I should have sent the picture. I'm sexy too. I, I get it, but, you, but can you have your own brush? Do I? Do you have to use mine? No, I'm gonna use my okay. own brush because I your stuff not gonna. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. So that's a no for you. That's fine. That's a no. I, I, but I don't. But, but see, it's, that's. But no, is that on. a count out? Is that a count out? No, it's not a deal breaker because it's some things I used to say I wouldn't do. Yeah. That at fifty now I will do. A hundred percent, I'm there. Yeah. Hundred you know I mean? percent. My my level of patience. My. What I, I told you, I tried 35, I tried to sit. Great here's a better. Hey, I ain't got no problem with that. But uh, yeah. no. Yeah, yeah. I, and so. Hey, we, ask me my question. I want some more questions. Give me some more. I want some good ones. Y'all give me uh, some. Can she have a fupa? I think that's what they call nope. She can't have a fupa. Well, I mean, is it proportioned? To her body? No. Yeah, I'm but if you, no. I mean, I'm, listen, that's a case by case situation. Yes. That's case by case situation. But I will say this. My last wife Look was five. Three. My last wife was five. My last wife was five three, 130 pounds after three kids. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So I'm so I'm probably gonna change that some, you know, but I have preferences. I yeah, have and pre- you get to have preferences. I mean, I but they're I, not I, concrete. I'm five eleven, six two with heels on, and I ain't gonna describe the rest of me. But if you had to give me a song, it would be She's a Brick. She's a Brick. <laughs> or would it be Put on Your Red Dress? Yeah. Your <laughs> high oh, heels. you had to describe me. So I ain't, I ain't thin. Something like that. I'm not thin at all. Like, right? So you, yeah, I, 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 I need you to be able to, I just, I need you to be, able, if I pass I out, can you pick me up? Yes. 
That's what I need you to be. Uh, asking. Oh, you weren't asking me that question. That was a rhetorical no, question. Asked, no. <laughs> was that a rhetorical question or were you asking me that question? Yes. No, I'm I'm asking asking if I pass out, oh. can we pick them up? Somebody said, can we have teeth in the right places? And see, my thing is, are you going through some stuff for your dentist and all this other stuff? Like, I'm not going to do that because older people or people in certain places didn't have dental care. See, I get deep with certain things, right? But I need to know if you pass out, can you pick me up? Okay, that's my whole one. If we pass out, or can I sit in, can your lap hold my thighs? Like, is what I always say, because I want to sit in your lap. I'm a baby. I'm a cuddler. Can your lap hold my thighs? If your lap can't hold my thighs, we probably got a little bit of a problem. <laughs> like we might. It don't mean it's a no, but we got we got to look. Look, my yeah. I don't look my my sister. Just to say, and uh, for the scale for sisters like us, lies and does and we don't. A lot of times we don't look like our numbers, right? I'm tall. My numbers don't always look like my what I and what I weigh. And I had, that's no that's one of the things I'm changing. That's one of the things I'm changing. <laughs> Somebody said, Avery said, girl, you're going to be laying there till Mims come. Avery, you and better it's be I will leave there. It's something I will leave. I'm not, some folk I'm not going to try to pick up, Keisha. I'm not. I'm just going to be no, like, no, no, at no, that no, moment, it was, it was in that moment. Listen, hold on. When you pass out, it was in that moment. I knew we were not compatible. <laughs> and then make sure, listen, but make sure. I probably one of the deepest, y'all know we playing, but one of the deepest articles I read was a girl who had a best friend and he was kind of heavy set and he was kind of into her, but she wasn't into him. They separated a year and a half later. He showed up and they wound up getting married because she said God had to really deal with her and, um, uh, God had to really deal with her and mature her. And so when he came back, she threw his size out the door and she reported how she was experiencing the best marriage ever and how well he loved her. Somebody say, <laughs> my cousin is correcting me. You know, you want to say he fat. Y'all know I be trying to be politically correct. <laughs> hey man, let's be yourself. Be yourself. My cousin be is yourself. like, he's, I, it is myself. Myself is politically correct. I know. Myself I know. is the person that always tries to say the best thing. That is my true self. That's not for other people. Well, I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let Alicia speak for your true self then. There yeah, you Alicia was like, he was saying, <laughs> I'm gonna let her say it for you. There you go, cuz. So they all said, Mama's boys are a no for me. So here's my thing with it. I, I don't, what do you mean by Mama's boy, uh, Sadell? Because I want you to love you, Mama. I don't want you to be upset with been, your Mama. Can she I come on and tell be, us that? I don't want you to be married to your Mama, but I want you to know, oh, uh, I'm on because when I'm on my time, I'm gonna say, Oh, your time, my, up this way. My, my, I don't want you. I want to know. I want you to be, uh, I, I want you to love and have some admiration and respect and be in. My dad was very good. Uh, my dad was very good to my grandmother, right? My husband had a whole lot of admiration and respect. My sons love me. Uh, my cousin said, Don't send up no fat or broke man. Um, uh, there's got to be boundaries with the mama for me. But I'm okay with you having a close relationship with your mama. I'm a mom of sons, and I wouldn't want nobody trying to come in between us. But I also know how to stay out of my kids' business. Mm -hmm. So I think when you know how to stay out your kids' business, that that's okay. If you talk about somebody that's all in your business, can you say to him? Because sometimes somebody don't know until the right person hit the scene. Sometimes somebody don't know until uh, you invest in the relationship that they even got a problem. That they have. Sometimes people don't know they the way they are until they encounter you. <laughs> wow. You may be the catalyst for change in their life. And when they come in connection and come with you, you share some things with them that has never been revealed to them before or has not been revealed to them in the right way. Right? Yeah. Like my my late husband was the baby of the family. He was the baby of eight. He and his mom had a very deep relationship. When when we came, when we started doing this marriage thing, I'm like, hey, uh, we need to just make sure we're leaving and cleaving. Like we in our own zone doing our right thing, right? So so, so several said mama's all in there. Okay, I hear. Uh, mama's all their business. They, they All in their business like they are their boyfriends, right? So uh, Christy, CJ Jackson said, we're all these available men. And they are, our men are available. I think we're, I watched a post not too long ago 
where someone had posted about men being hurt too. I, I think we have not identified the pain that our men are. Can I go serious for a second? I don't think we've identified the pain that our men are in. I think our men are hiding. Um, I think we also have men who are fed up. I think also um, you have to be open to sometimes we don't see the available men because our lists are so extensive that we don't see them. We won't even see a person before us. And um, unfortunately, I think we are in a time where um, culturally, um, yeah, just that they working through their trauma too. I think especially culturally, like say if you're a person that says, oh, I, I just, I have to be with an African-American man. Well, if your person has to be an African-American man, you better believe you probably getting ready to deal with someone who's dealing with their trauma just as well, who may be needing to heal. Men are coming, I feel like, in a knowledge of being in a space where they feel like, I hope we're starting to make them feel like they can deal with therapy. Um, they can deal with the issues. If they're not, then we as women need to do, do a better job and provide them a space where they know that they can be tender, vulnerable, and get help. And that doesn't mean anything else is going on with them. So I think we are in a season now where instead of men just decide, but I also say this, I'm going to strike something. I think because the ratio probably in the African-American community from male to female, there are more women than there are males. Men also sometimes are less likely to commit because they have so many options. Absolutely. Because they have so many options and women are not saying, you know what, we don't all get to be your 30,000 option, right? We don't, we don't get to all be your option. At some point, you got to choose. I think that's probably a little bit of an issue out there too. Thanks, Jarvis, for saying it was a great show. That's good stuff. Yeah, that's, yeah this is, this says, uh, this has been a really good conversation. Um, uh, I don't want it to end, but I know we got to because uh, Lakeisha got to go. She, Lakeisha got to go to bed. She got coffee and conversations yeah. at six a.m. Central Standard Time, so uh, yeah. she got to go to bed. But uh, can I speak is- into your life for a second before we go? Sure. Thank you. First of all, thank you, James, for giving me six weeks of your time. Um, I appreciate you. You did not have to invite me to the intellectual stew. You did not have to promote uh, what I do. You could have been um selfish um this is probably the last time and i'm trying to get teary eyed this is probably the last time i do something on singleness i have for nine years taught hard on being saved single sanctified and all this other stuff and i just have a knowing can i don't know how i don't know what but gears will shift and the next time i start talking about relationships are probably going to be from courtship dating and a whole different perspective um, I'm, I'm just, I know the time for me talking about my singleness has ended. So mm-hmm. thank you for giving me the last six best weeks, um, to be able to articulate my heart, to give some of the zone that I'm in and the space that I'm in. Um, you, um, are amazing. I want to speak into you. You are amazing. Um, what you are doing is effective. What you are doing is necessary. Um, thank you for putting it out there. Thank you for giving your best effort. Thank you for being authentically James. Thank you for showing up in spaces, even before I knew you were here, where you were not as confident when you were in pain, when you were still trying to, to figure you out. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for starting something that someone else probably didn't have the courage to do. Um, thank you for being a platform that wasn't just safe for men, that if you have built a platform that is also safe for women. Thank you for being visionary. Thank you for being a catalyst for change. Thank you for being bold. Thank you for being sober. Thank you for going for it. You are doing things that other people will hide behind the scenes and make excuses. So I just want to say thank you for that. Um, You are necessary. Don't let nobody ever tell you you're not. Um, I believe (laughs) that when God gives you the right one, one for you that she will not compete with you, that she will not compete with you, that she will compliment you, that she will come to you whole enough, that she will be satisfied with God first 
so that she could add to your value and not rub you the wrong way, that she'll be sensitive to your nature, that she mm. will um, be sensitive to the spaces in you that will not heal until she comes in contact with you. That will not heal until she, that you guys will worship the Lord together, that you will grow together, that all your trauma, mistakes and things from your past will be into the seat of forgetfulness and that you guys will love each other from a space that you and her has created. And it's beautiful and in your own vibe and in your own thing and in your own time and not even the residue of your past marriage or anything else will even touch the beauty of what God will do for you. I just need to speak that to you. When I receive every, every word, every word of it. And uh, yeah, I receive every word. I appreciate that. And I appreciate you and bringing your audience over. And uh, listen, y'all don't leave. We're here every Monday night. We're here every Monday night. And we're talking about relevant things. I'm going to make an announcement in just a moment. But I want to, I want LMJ to do her plug first. Do your 6 a.m. plug and do your yeah. devotional plug. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, y'all join us 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, Coffee and Conversations with Lakeisha. We are in our six and a half year march. It'll be seven years, the devotional, seven years full time ministry. If you didn't know, I was a college instructor for 12 years of my life and then God pushed me into ministry full time. Um, I don't, I don't do wasting. My cousin Valerie is like, give another session. One, you know, uh, one thing I will tell you, I want to say this is we are a community growing in grace in Jesus Christ. We show up and we just allow the Holy Spirit to feed us. We are learning how to take revelation. Revelation is so important. Pastor G, Eugene Whitmore teaches that all the time. Revelation is so important. We're learning how to be revealed, the sound, the ways of God. Uh, just, just drop the link. You can come, you can follow the page, but do me a favor because I see my tribe on here. Go follow the intellectual stew. Uh, get your notifications turned on and keep in touch with James, what James is doing, whether LMJ is on the show or not, still keep in touch with, he is vital. He is going to be vital to our community. And then the second thing he was talking to you about was 30 days of prayer. Um, it's a devotional that I wrote. It's very plain, very simple, takes you through prayers that you can pray for your children. You can pray for your grandchildren. I'm praying it right now. And it's making a huge difference in I, prayers run, pray, prayers pull heaven to earth, but it's making a difference in how I respond to my 13 year old right now. And I'm enjoying how God is navigating me through this relationship with prayer. You can go to the website, lmjministries.org and stay connected, subscribe and stay connected um, there. So that's it. Thank you for doing it. Thank you for doing that. That's how you keep following. That's how you stay connected to where we are and who we are. Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm the type of person that I, I believe all of us can take each other to another level. I, yes. You know, I've had people come on here and try to build their own platforms on me. You know what I'm saying? And start yeah. go off and do their own things. I've never had anything but good intentions. And that's yeah. all I have. Let me tell yeah. you something. I, people don't, Lakeisha, this is me and you talking right now for a hot second. People don't realize, yeah. I mean, I can preach a little. God has gifted me to preach a little bit, right? Yes. But I've come in second seven times at some major churches at this church. In oh, this thank country. you, James Rose. Seven yeah. times. Seven times. So do you, when you have a message, do you stop trying to put your message out because you came in second, you know what I'm saying? Cause you know, no. and, and that wasn't what God had for you. You no. know what I'm saying? So where yes. I am now is I can reach so many more people the way yes. I'm doing this and, and I can be intentional. Um, we're going to talk, we're going to talk more. And ministry know. means to meet a need. That's right? it. Ministry. And you can talk, and you can talk about church folk without talking about the church. Yes. And without and blasting or at church. the church or beating the church up. You can say real things, right? Yeah. But ministry means to meet a need and it happens in so many ways. And if we'll ever get outside the walls, we'll experience the glory well, we're of doing God, it now. power well, we did of it for- God. We stay right within the framework. For six we weeks. stay holy. We stay in the space and we just talk to truth, which the dialogue needs to be able to, to be able to be there so that we can do and have what what we need brother i'm proud of you like i'm just so i'm pr- i'm proud of you you haven't seen anything yet trust me but uh i know you gotta go i'll holler at you y'all, y'all hang with me for a minute i want to make a couple of quick announcements right quick okay uh, I'm, I'm, gonna get, go. I'm out on Keisha, y'all. i'm gonna say this in front of everybody lakeisha i love you I oh, promise I love I'm you, more. you are you are all right with me i promise you you are I, all right so y'all tell lmj bye hang out with me give me about five more minutes and i promise you I, or well, maybe a couple more but uh we out of here right. see you all right so listen uh everybody else